Welcome to our lecture online. Now that we found the two currents, I1 and I2 as a function of time, we're now ready to find the energy stored in the two circuits with the magnetic mutual coupling uh, at time equals 1.5 seconds. And then to find that, uh, the equation to do that is equal to 1 half the inductance of the first inductor times the current in the first loop squared plus 1 half times the inductance of the second inductor times I2 squared plus or minus the mutual coupling times the product of the two currents. Now, why is it plus or minus? Well, it depends how the currents flow through the inductor, whether or not they both go through the same dot point of the inductor, or if one is on the opposite side. In this case, one is on the opposite side of the dot, and this one comes in through the dot uh, point of the inductor. So, therefore, that is going to be a minus, we're going to have to subtract it when they come into both sides and it's additive and then we have a plus. So since they come in at opposite sides, this will become a minus. But before we can plug everything into the equation, we need to find I1 and I2 at a particular moment in time when time equals 1.5 seconds. We kept the two results of the previous video right there, so now we need to plug that in. So we have I1 when time equals 1.5 seconds is equal to 19.62, 19.612, I guess that's 612, times the cosine of 2 times 1.5, that's in radians, so we want to make sure that we don't mess that up, radians, plus a phase angle of plus 11.31 degrees. So we have to convert that from radians to degrees, so we have 3, times 180 divided by pi equals 177.887. Alright, so this becomes 19.612 times the cosine of 171.887 degrees plus 11.31 degrees. Wow, that's almost 180. The cosine of 180 is almost Oh, well, it's about negative 1. Okay, that's good. So we're going to add plus 11.31 to that. So we end up with, this is equal to 19.612 times the cosine of 183.197 degrees. All right, when we take the cosine of that, we get almost negative 1 times 19.612. And that gives us a current of minus 19.581 amps. All right, so that's I1. For I2, we do the same thing for t equals 1.5 seconds. And that's going to be equal to 13.868, 13.868 times the cosine of 3, oh, I'll go like this, times, times the cosine of 3 radians plus a phase angle of 56.31 degrees. All right, so that's again, that's 171.887 plus 56.31 equals, and so that gives us 13.868 times the cosine of 228. 0.197 degrees. So we we'll take the cosine of that and multiply times 13.868 equals, oh, let me try it again, 228.197. Take the cosine and multiply that times 13.868 equals, that gives us a minus 9.244 amps. I think something is wrong with this. That didn't sound right. Let me check something out. Hmm. Oh. oh, I guess I got it right. All right. Didn't seem familiar, but I guess it is right. All right, so, so far so good. No mistakes, I can keep going. So this is I2. 
So now that we have the values for I1 and I2, I can plug those in the equation to find the energy. So energy at 1.5 seconds is equal to one half times two Henry's times I1 squared, which is 19.581 squared. 19.581 squared plus one half times one Henry times 9.244 squared. Now, is it plus or minus? Remember it's plus if they both enter the inductor on the same side, on the dot side or the non-dot side, but here they enter on different sides, so that becomes a minus. The mutual coupling, or magnetic coupling of one Henry times the two currents, they're both negative currents, so make sure we put in the correct sign, so 19.581 and a negative 9.244. But all that will still make that into a negative because two negatives times a negative is still a negative. All right, so what do we get? So energy at 1.5 seconds is equal to, we have 19, I guess technically speaking, I should put negatives there, but since we're squaring it, we don't really care because it will be a positive value. So 19.581 squared times one, which gives us 383.4 joules. On the next one, we get 9.244 squared divided by 2. We get plus 42.7 joules and then minus 19.581 times 9.244 and we get 181 minus 181.0 joules and so finally when we add all those up we get 383.4 plus 42.7 minus 181 and that gives me 245.1 joules which is the total energy stored in the circuits at 1.5 seconds and that is how it's done.